what I'm going to do this week is I'm going to answer a question that was put to me um, by one of the members and this talking a little bit about edge and are there any sort of specific high probability setups that I could talk through that perhaps would allow people to sort of develop an edge now I, I looked into this and I thought well it's very difficult to throw out numerous different setups and say this one's got this probability this probability this probability because that also isn't inherently an edge that's a probabilistic situation um i'll try and elaborate on this with a little bit of a an analogy as well but the the point being that i wanted to talk more about what the difference between a setup is and your actual edge and often edge is quite personal and it's about understanding what it is that you do well and how you recognize certain things what builds into any trade that you're going to take so we'll start off with what I think are perhaps some of the key distinctions between edge and a setup now to me an edge comes not just from understanding the nuances or specifics of a setup it comes more from implementation of a strategy at a specific time in a specific environment this is what improves your probability of success or improves your ability to take on risk now what i mean by this is you could have the same setup over and over and over and over time that may have a certain probability and this is my point that a setup can be learned so you could teach someone the specifics the entry points of let's say a double top pattern and i'll give you an example of this a little bit later you could have a, a very rigid sort of rule to follow that if you see a double top based on a five minute chart let's say then you execute at this point you have an expectation of this and you could back test that and find that perhaps 55 percent of the time that trade works now that has a statistical edge is that enough to give you an edge on the trade though probably not because part of that statistical edge is diminished by the cost of transaction so part of that five percent because essentially what you're doing is if you take 10 trades or let's say in this example because i've given 55 shouldn't have should have done the maths a little bit earlier um you're essentially going to win two out of every 20 in the sense that you'll take 20 trades and effectively that will give you a win of two because the other um, 18 will cancel each other out. Half will be losers, half will be winners. And the two will be the difference between the 45% loss rate and the 55% win rate. So you're only going to take two winners. Those two winners have also got to cover the cost of all the other 20 trades. So part of that percentage win or that statistical edge is actually often diminished by transaction cost. So whilst they can be learnt, and there is nothing to say that as a setup or you know a specific pattern is a bad thing, you know they, they they work fine. The edge comes from the fact of this understanding of context of where your market's going, where it's more likely to be going, and how that's going to happen. That gives you conviction, and that's where your edge comes from. Your edge comes from using a setup. To allow yourself to get into a trade that you've already kind of pre-planned that you can already understand how people are positioned in a market where that market may well be going that's where your edge comes from that deeper understanding that that ability to just basically sort of say to yourself this is the big chance this is the opportunity to take whereas if you just take that let's call it a double top trade every time you're going to run into difficulty that there's going to be a lot of those trades that you'll look at and say to yourself i don't think this is a great idea but to get that statistical edge you have to take it every time so more what you you what you're doing is your edge is built on using a certain setup to say yes this is the right time to use it and i'm going to use it now and that's the whole point there that a setup gives you a chance to execute it's not your edge on its own i'll give you a little example for those of you who like tennis i'm not a massive tennis fan so i hope i haven't done this down too much for anyone but let's say for example you're you're the little black dot down here and this is your tennis racket the little sir, the little dash now the example i've got here is you've been set up for a forehand the balls come over and you've been set up that you can play forehand straight down the line now 
that may well be quite a simple tennis shot it may well be a more favored shot so you know one of your favorite setups a setup that you really like you feel really confident that if you execute this nine times out of ten you will get the ball over the net into the court at the end and probably win the point straight down the line now the point here being that if you're practicing you could practice that over and over and over again and you could back test your ability to hit the ball from where you are at O straight down the line to X and you could be very very confident in your ability to execute that but like in tennis and in trading there are other moving parts your opponent is not going to stand still to watch you execute this perfect setup and beautifully smash the ball down the line they're going to move and so what you've then got to understand is this on its own is a great setup and you've probably got a 90% chance of executing that shot but you've then got an opponent if they're standing at X the chance of this shot actually being a winning shot is probably much lower they're in the perfect place to return this putting you in a difficult situation or giving you something else to have to do Whereas if they're standing at the blue X, this this opportunity now, yes, you've got a high probability of executing that shot. But not only that, you've got a very, very high probability that as long as you execute it, you'll win the point as well. And that's that's where your sort of edge comes from, is in understanding whether this shot's actually worth taking. Now, if they're standing right here, this may not be. You might have to play a shot that you're slightly less comfortable with and just play it back over the net. I'm not going to give you examples of tennis shots to play because like I say, I'm not a tennis pro. But the point being that you'll play something a little bit more safe and just play it back careful over the net. Give yourself another opportunity. And this is where your edge comes from. It's little bit of fear there on the computer this is where your edge comes from this recognization this understanding of how that frame is playing out to make this shot the right shot to take or not and then execute it accordingly and that's my point being the distinction between edge and just purely a setup i'll go and have a quick look at an example that i was given and have a look at this and try and look at different ways that people may well have some kind of edge on this trade because like I say, edge is a personal thing and it comes down to your own way of executing trades, what you look for from a trade, your own sort of personal specifics of those types of things. Now, first up, I'll give you a bit of context. So I think context is really key. And that, to me, is what's so important with any kind of trade. It's not just purely the setup on itself. The context gives you gives you the tools you need to be able to say yes this this is a trade worth taking and this to me is where from a technical point of view I'm quite a technical trader from a very technical point of view this is where your edge comes from from this understanding of is is this actually a situation that has got more legs to it or not and then also playing that trade accordingly you could take this trade on but it may well have different targets depending upon your understanding of context, you depend upon the specifics of the setup rather than sort of play the same, play the trade the same every time. So this is current setup. We're in the Euro. Euro has been very, very stable throughout the entirety of December. We've had our ups and downs, but ultimately we're moving, as I probably said numerous times over the past year, between around about 111.30 and 112.90 it's been around about the peak so perhaps 112.60 up here is the high so for a month or so we've been sitting in around about 150 tick range give or take so very stable market a market doesn't seem to gain a great deal of traction in either direction we've come down to recent lows ground down there throughout the beginning of the year and then bounced from the 111.30s <coughs> excuse me taking us right the way back up to 111.73s you can see where this has provided support previously support again before we then break down so we've then got the potential to break here and then rotate back up through this range not necessarily going to be a huge move but movement back within the range from a profile point of view as well value's been unchanged the last couple of days 
close up towards the high. This is the zone that's important. You've had multiple tests of 11.73. You've then got previous lows, tops and bottoms of value all coming in around about 11.81. This little blocked off zone here is this little zone here. This is the zone that you're looking for, what I would call a decision zone. You get into there and that's where you decide whether we're going higher or lower. So what then happens? Well, what we then get is move up into this decision zone. This is also the weekly pivot point. Like I say, I'm not someone who massively uses pivot points. I've got the daily pivot points on here at on this chart at the moment. So break into the decision zone up to weekly pivot point and turn straight back. This gives you what I would call a swing rebound, swing failure candle, i.e. we have broken the recent highs, can't close above and closes back inside range. From there, the move proceeds down towards the middle of range. Now, if we go back over to this chart, you can see here the 1158s, these highs just here is where we've stalled on the first drop through 1173. So this has been a reasonably key area, not a massively important, but reasonably key area. It's also the daily pivot. So we drop down there with Delta falling. Delta falls as we move back down, we're moving into the top side of value from the day before. So still not really sort of pushing any lower. Market then stalls, turns around and moves higher. Euro at this point strengthens against most other currencies. Now, that's giving you a little bit of context and the trade that we're looking at here or the setup we're looking at is this swing failure how do you play it should you play it what should you expect and that they're, they're the key parts of it that this is merely a setup this is the ball coming over the net to your forehand now you've now got to make a choice of what you're going to do with it is your opponent standing out the way making it a nice easy shot that you can really go for or are they standing right in the way of that and you need to play something a little bit more containing. So this would be the trade and what you're looking for is as soon as you've seen this failure, this is where you've now got to start making decisions. So what I've got here is a one minute and a 15 minute chart. And the question here being, where is your edge? And this is, this is where it comes down to a personal thing about understanding what you do well and what you can try and take out of the trade, what you can expect to take out of the trade. So take here on a one minute chart and we'll go and look at a shorter time frame trade, what I would call perhaps more of an execution edge. Someone who's able to sort of notice slight difference in what's just happened and use that to their advantage to take a counter trade. They're not necessarily looking for any kind of huge movement. Most likely they're going to be looking for something back down the range or until this drift down starts to dissipate and again using a sort of order flow execution type edge to understand that buy-ins now started to come back in here maybe they're still going to end up getting out around here around about the low 60s rather than you know it's very very hard to be able to say that's definitely the low and I think anyone trying to get that accurate to sell it here and buy it back here is probably fooling themselves in the likelihood of ever being able to achieve that but your, your execution edge here comes to the fact that you notice this and a lot of it comes about gathering information before, understanding what's just happened before and the nature of that swing failure or swing rebound. This has been created on a very quick move up. Buyers came straight in, fast push up. This could be an exhaustion. It could be a continuation. Now the key bit to answer that is what happens if we when we come back. If this is a very strong continuation move, in all probability won't even come back if it's an exhaustion it's likely to come back if there's more buying in it you'll get buying from here you don't get it two green candles very very low diminishing volume and then volume starts to rise again as we start falling or as we hold below 73 this is that that bit where if you can spot that selling you can execute short-term trade here you can sell those 73 so you're getting in basically as it fails higher the move's then confirmed as you drop to 68. The move then continues down towards lows of the day and those 58 level. Now, just purely from a short term time frame, I'd almost call this a scalp trade. You're executing based on that increased selling. That gets you in. You play the move down. Chances are you're getting out somewhere in the low 60s, high 50s. 
is your short term execution. Now, there's an additional trade here, and this comes from something that the member in question was talking about, and their understanding correlation to other markets. And this could be an edge in itself as well. You don't have to be taking every trade here. You don't have to be playing this trade. Ultimately, this was a failure at the top of a recent range. Let's take it back to here. Failure at the top of this range, but in a market that is just bouncing level to level. So, yes, you could expect down to 58. There's your first hurdle. We stall it. Now, your second point where you could have an edge here is this overall understanding of what else is going on after this swing failure you then get same in the other direction now if you're looking at the euro against other currencies and you can see that it was showing strength against other currencies we could also see it showing strength against dollar therefore this swing reverse swing rebound trade just here buying it back above 58 could well be a more valuable trade because of the correlation and that could be your edge, that understanding of correlation to help you execute trades. Now, where you execute that, again, comes down to understanding of when and where you want to be getting into this trade. You can take this purely technically and execute it from down here. Somewhere around about 60s, once you've closed back above, even on the retest of 60 or 62s, you can execute down here. Alternatively, here's your execution point. This brings in an understanding that you will have people positioned short in here. Look, still looking at this trade. And you know, from a purely technical, if you're playing it as a setup point of view, you're selling it here, you're looking for a move down here. You don't get it. So there will still be people short here. They're then going to exit, exit their trade. The euro continues against other pairs. This then helps to move up. And that's where you can then execute this trade. And this all comes down to gathering this information. The market struggles back at 11.58. You then have strength in other, or strength in the euro against other currencies. Further reason to want to buy it. And that then gives you conviction and confidence that if you get back above 73 again, this market's got more legs to it. It's already shown that the sellers can't progress the move lower. Buyers initially have failed. But we're now getting more selling in, so you've got fuel to go higher. Euro strength, generally, that can give you that break. And so it's about using that wider context and correlation. That can give you the edge there. i take this on to a slightly shorter um, time frame, and perhaps a slightly more simplistic one. And this comes straight from this morning. A setup, which, like I say, if you play this every time, you could have been taking this trade but it doesn't work out and this comes down to context this comes down to understanding and this is where it, your edge also and it, something people should really work on is stopping the trades that are not going to help you make money and i know that sounds very simplistic don't lose money what i mean by that is this is a tempting trade you've been you've moved up you've got a double top market falls you could sell it here confirms the double top breaks drops that would seem like quite a nice trade very obvious very clear double top on a five minute sell it you could even if you're going to go really aggressive sell it from up here and hope to be in as it breaks but the point here being that this is perhaps not a trade that you really want to be taking bun's fallen recently value shifted lower we then have a push down not a great push down i talked about this on monday opens lower and drives straight back up fills value in gaps open moves higher so already you're in quite a bullish market you know the market is looking quite strong you've got short positioning here who's not getting paid could they then start to exit their trades so whilst this looks tempting you're going to need it very much through this confirmation point and back inside or back below 28 before even considering this and that understanding of that wider context that's what then prevents you from taking this trade on do you buy it down here possibly but you have still got this double top that goes against the idea of buying it down here but once it then pushes through this is where you can start having to go to buy and looking for a further continuation higher so that's the important thing there that just because there's a setup and maybe this does have a statistical edge to it over time 
your edge is more in the understanding that yes this may have a statistical edge over time but you can improve that edge by not taking the ones that clearly in context don't look like they're work going to work out and that's where your edge can can be built on basically it's a way of improving the probability of a setup as opposed to executing it every time so i hope that's given uh, something for people to think about think very deeply about what your own edge is what you do well how you execute trades well and what goes into your planning your expectations of the trades that work and take apart the trades that don't why haven't they worked did you miss something in your planning and what could be changed about it because if you can realize why a trade hasn't worked often you can either stop taking that trade on or turn that into a trade that can work for you so i'll wrap it up there guys have a very good rest of your day i'll see you at 4 45 as always use your place if you do want to get in touch thanks for the question and send any further to me as well richard at axia futures or if you're on the members chat message me direct on there all right guys i'll leave you to it have a good rest of your afternoon trading see you at 4 45